The following show features episodic breakdowns of Jackass, either performed by professionals or under the supervision of professionals. For your safety, avoid listening to this podcast at all times. Hi, I'm Mikey Aaronworth. I'm Jason Wellwood. And I'm Chris Aaronworth. Welcome to Jackass. Welcome to Jackass. It's the podcast where we're on a path of destruction through every single episode of Jackass. We are just three lifelong fans of the show, reliving the belly laughs, bad ideas, and broken bones. No one's wilder than the Wild Boys, boys. And I cannot wait to fucking do this new little twist, this new episode. As everyone knows, as I talked about, this is my favorite jackass type thing i absolutely love this stuff over here and i am absolutely pumped on this so um doing that we're doing something a little bit different now um i figured i'd change things up a little bit and, and uh mikey what's your fun fact of the day you did you do your homework oh did boy. i do did i do my homework yeah you did, know you I'm mean the, what you just don't have a fun doesn't fact look of like the day it. Uh, you know what? Usually okay. what happens. Okay, fine. You know what? I'll just tell my fact of the day. Maybe we'll just stick okay. with this. Maybe I'll just be the fun fact guy because Mikey can't yeah, do his fucking job over what? here. You had one, you, one chance. Why and one did you job. even ask him? What was All right. The point? <laughs> All right. Fine, Chris. Then uh, then you got to be funny on this episode. You got to do that heavy lifting. How about that? Oh, did you do your own work there? You know what the ironic thing is, guys? It's like. Oof. As much as I always make fun of Mikey for being the nerd, this is nature. Now this is my fucking domain. And I'm going to end up being a completely <laughs> different character when, whenever we're doing Wild Boy episodes because my inner nerd is going to come out. So um, to the point, this episode came out. It's the first one of Wild Boy season one. Episode one came out October 26 of the year 2003. Being that it's a nature show, I figured I'd kind of have a nature fun fact. Um, the Cedar Fire, the second largest fire in California history, killed 15 people consumed 250 acres, 1,000 kilometers squared, mm-hmm. and 2,220 2, homes in the San Diego area. Wow. Whoa. Wait, how long ago was this? Sorry, when did this come out? I, I zoned. This was, this was 2003. 2003. Holy shit. So, yeah. With, yeah. With, wildfires, with, you think, like, nowadays, you kind of just, there's so much shit it's every down, day. Yeah. down there. It's like every day. But back then, I, I guess, you know, you don't really think about it, but it, it happened. It's happened. Nothing's wilder than the it's wildfires. before. <laughs> Nothing wilder than a wildfire. Now, are those, wild crazy, fo- man. are those yeah. wildfires start, uh, spelt with uh, with just one word? Because that was screwing me over. I kept searching wild space boys did you have and realized Z? that, yeah, I did have the Z, but you got to make it all one word. I forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's the year 2000, right? Everything's very, you got to use as many Z- Zs or Zs if you're, if you're, if you're on our side of the, the do, divide do you call line. It a Z? Uh, you got, Nah, I call it Z. Says that. No, you don't. I, I do. Mean, when when how, you sing you the ABC song, are you ending yeah. it with Y and Z? That's exactly that no. Jay. That's exactly what I was going to say. If it doesn't fucking yeah. rhyme, it didn't. You didn't do the crime, you know. <laughs> yeah. I just. How often am I singing yeah. the ABCs these days? It just doesn't. That doesn't happen very. You often. hanging out around parks with kids? I'm sure it's a lot more than the rest of us. <laughs> hey, tw- that's Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Same melody, very different song, very different results. <laughs> now it's time to get in my car. <laughs> South Africa, episode one of Wild Boys. And uh, yeah, what a place to start. You know, I've always wanted to go on an African lion safari. Ooh, baby. Uh, now could be our chance, boys. Uh, we're starting out here where the Atlantic and Indians oceans, Indians, o- Indian oceans, son of a bitch. Uh, here's the thing. I love Pontius right out of the gate because... You get the um, impression that what we're about to watch here, like, let's just assume this is the first time you ever saw this show in your life. You're here for the premiere. You get the vibes right out of the gate. It's part nature doc, part road trip, part jackass. I really like where it's going, but Pontius loves to just, he's doing his monologue and he's saying like, I don't know, there could be thousands, maybe even millions of great white sharks here. He's just really playing it up. Being a, his his old Pontius self that we love, he's always been great at these monologues. He's bringing you know his inner Bunny the lifeguard here to the show, and I love it. Um, yeah, guys, we got a lot to 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 come and check out. And as Pontius says, these sharks like to feed on everything. Everything. They're the most dangerous creatures in the sea. I mean, they eat ostriches, baboons, man, women, children. They eat everything, guys. Are you excited <laughs> to see some fucking great whites or great whites or what? So you know how Chris is super afraid of sharks. Or sorry, of snakes. I'm super afraid of sharks. They're they're my biggest oh, fear no by far. I couldn't like I have trouble swimming in the deep ends of a pool late at night if I can't see what's underneath me. And like logically, I'm very confident that there's no shark in that pool. But <laughs> as soon as I get yeah, in, I'm be. like, 
The, hey, listen. Release the sharks. Release the sharks. Mikey it's is just in this the pool. Weird is it like that same are. kind of feeling when you're in like in the shower and you're doing the shampoo and you are kind of spooked <laughs> out about something and your eyes are closed and you're just like yes. scrubbing to get your eyes open in case something's like some demons looking at you or something? It's exactly it. It's like <laughs> I need to have control of this situation. The problem is when you're in deep water, you can't see anything around you. And that always fucks with me yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Uh, I, I want to say before before Pontius got into his monologue. I can't believe how how hard and stiff the goosebumps were that I got when the theme song played. It was like right yeah. back. I forgot how much this show did mean to me because Chris always talks about it so much. And I was like, yeah, Wild Boys is okay. It's good. And then it just reminded me of, of how much fun. This is just two good friends having fun. Much like this podcast is three good friends having fun. Aww. I was going to say yeah, two of and- us, me and Jay. You're not really our friend, Mikey. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're the nerd this time. Come on, own it. Oh, guys, to preface this, too, in case this is your first time uh, getting into Wild Boys, this is uh, mainlined by Steve-O and Pontius, so uh, I, you couldn't pick two guys to be better for this role. I think this was the perfect cast selection, and I'm glad they're here doing it. And we will see appearances throughout the show of other cast members and crew members. You'll you'll see, even in this episode, we have a, a, a appearance that surprised me. Um, I do want to say before we move forward, boys, I feel like i got to get this out of the way now. Uh, and I'd love to get your reactions live on camera. So, uh, Ooh. you know, when we started the show and I think someone mentioned Wild Boys, probably Chris, and we all kind of went, oh yeah, what a good show. Hopefully we'll talk about that one day. I got a confession to make. What's that? I've never watched Wild oh Boys. Oh my God. What? You're what? In such a treat. How much? Oh my God. I'm so, uh, ugh. So wow. I, might, I might have played it off like, yeah, oh, Wild Boys, oh, fucking love Wild Boys. I've probably only ever seen Wild Boys in passing, like if my brother had it on and I walked into the room and I said, oh, look at that, Steve-O's humping a great white shark or whatever. That looks wow. cool, I wonder what that is. But like I never, I knew oh. of Wild Boys, I know it exists, I know it's a big deal, I know there's many seasons of this show, I just never got into it. So, so, um, I was more, we had the Viva La Bam DVD, so I watched the shit out of that, but this show is fresh for me, so I'm excited to get into it because it's all new. I know we're just at the beginning, but I, I, I can't even wait to the end. Like, what did you just quickly, what did you think about it? Are you, ha- like, is it more than you expected or... Yeah, okay, without spoiling too yeah, much, I'll I just, say I just that. I want to hear it, this now. I can't wait. Oh, totally. It, it's It's got me excited. I want to see where they're going to go with it. I feel like this first episode, I was surprised at how much danger is involved right out of the gate. I thought they would, you know, it, it might be like a jackass season one scenario where it starts off slow and gets more intense, and I'm sure in some ways it will, but already I'm surprised at, like, the shit that they're actually putting themselves yeah. through and the danger. Like, this could have been a one-episode series because they could have just fucking died in this episode and that would have been the end of it true uh so yeah i'm excited to see where it goes from here yeah i that that's surprising to me but uh but i'm i'm excited to kind of gauge your reaction i don't think i've seen every episode of it like chris has so there's probably going to be some moments that that i'm i'm experiencing for the first time and we can we can hold each other's hands through that i'm looking forward to it Let's, let's you guys are such noobs. Boys. I got my camo outfit on just for getting the mood. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, like, I fucking noticed. You just <laughs> that was that was. I just I just assume that's how you dress every day because it's not that far from it. So. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> um, boys, so, am I get? Sorry, Mikey, jump in. No, no. I was just gonna say I I'd love to talk about this little bit of the baboons. It's gonna be a bit of a different structure uh, because some of the stunts are aren't quite stunty the way that Jackass is. But we'll do our best to make it through and kind of go beat by beat for you guys. Yeah, for sure. I think that's the best way to handle this. I don't even think we didn't really talk about it officially before, but we might not even need to do ratings here. I think we just need to enjoy the enjoy what's here. Um, and right out of the gate, boys, I'm getting some fucking flashbacks. Are you uh, a monkey getting in a van? Have we I, seen this before yes, somewhere? I was going to say channeling their best subway monkey hour by by uh, Tom Green. That was fantastic. I know we always plug that episode, but if you haven't, go listen to it. Give Tom Green some love. I love that episode. Definitely. Uh, I feel like I've seen this before. We got a baboon, you know, climbing into the van with them. And when someone says close the door, I just immediately thought of Mr. Green there. But uh, (laughs) he doesn't quite get locked in the van this time. We get the monkey on the roof and he kind of sits there almost in a meditative pose. And they're making fun of him. This is a bare bun baboon, by the way. And it's not long before he whips his dick out and starts Mm -hmm. masturbating, which is, oh, Chef's kiss. Uh, do you think Pontius was watching this just like, I mean, first of all, Steve-O goes up to Pontius and is like, hey, I got an idea for a show. And Pontius is like, I'll stop you right there. Do I ever have to wear a shirt? And Steve-O said no. And Pontius said, I'm in. <laughs> do I get and to then he's there thongs? watching. 
Yes. Yeah, the You're camel thongs. Go. That's yeah. about it. That's about it. Uh, do I get to show my dick multiple times an episode? I'm in. But he's watching this baboon, this bare-ass baboon jack off on top of a, a van. And I could just picture Pontius being like, why the fuck was I born a human being? That's everything I've ever wanted to do is sit on a van, jack off with my bare ass hanging out and have people laugh at me. That's all I've ever wanted. I was trying to figure out if this is pre or post jackass too, because maybe if he saw the baboon jacking off, he would have like flashbacks of horse of uh yeah, horse come and just be like, Oh no. Like just like, jackass. like that Korea, like where you see the planes going in the PSD yeah. shit. <laughs> PTSD. <laughs> Uh, Jackass number two came out in 2006, so oh, this yeah. is actually before then. Okay, this, this yeah. oh, wow. wasn't that ruined yet. I love how they're yeah. referring to the monkeys. They were like, excuse me, sir, this gentleman over here, that man is yeah. really scary. <laughs> like, they're talking. Like, I don't know what I, I found that so funny. But it was just well, a, they have such a noble look to their yeah, face. I, I understand it. was a subtle little it. touch. I don't know. I really like that. And with this monkey, too, I love it. Eventually gets down off the van, and uh, it just kind of struts between them. It doesn't, like, there's no danger. He just kind of struts away, like, yeah? What'd you think of that? You yeah, like that? Yeah. Eh? I, eh? And then Pontius has to say, I, I was just so focused on that monkey's ugly wiener. It looks a lot like mine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I and he looks so sad. When you boil this down, if you really like take it to the, the premise of this all, the main premise of their opening skit of their brand new TV show is taking out their wiener, showing it to a monkey <laughs> in hopes that it would help him get his boner back so he wouldn't feel insecure. That is, that is, yeah, how, support, how are you selling you know? this? Like, you must be so huge at this point that MTV would be like, oh, that's the opening stunt? Sure, why not? This yeah. is going to work. And that's it fucking amazing. worked well. <laughs> Isn't that what they do uh, at on porn shoots when the guy can't get it up? They just they have a couple guys there. Hey, Brad, Brad, over here. Check it out. Check mine's, it out. Look, mine's, we're mine's just hard. like you. We're yeah, just like just you. Like you can do it. Oh, I, thought, I thought fluffers were mean. a whole different thing. Yeah. I thought it was the girls yeah, that no. just fluffed your dick up. You misunderstood. Oh. It's it's a bro. It's a real bro out. Fluffers are. Yeah. Fuck it, man. Yeah, if I see someone else with a raging one, way. it's just going to make my anxiety go down. <laughs> make it go down even harder. <laughs> you guys got a different mentality than me. <laughs> Look, guys, we saw a bear bun baboon here, and before it jumped on the van, they were talking about how they're going extinct. Turns out they might not actually be extinct, according to Stevo, because. Well, not yet, anyway. You see, they're not the smartest of creatures. They could be on that path, though, because they like to play by the ocean water, where these thousands, I don't know, maybe millions of great white sharks are waiting to prey on the bare buns of that baboon. And what a perfect transition in, into what is going to be the meat of this episode. Uh, we're going to go and finally see some great whites. Uh, and the idea here is that uh, they want to make them jump through the air. So they jump on a boat, nighttime off the coast, beautiful beautiful night there in South Africa and uh, they've basically crafted these seal dummies from what I can only assume are the souls of used sneakers or some other uh, <laughs> save the planet uh, green you know means yeah. uh, you, getting, you know good use. getting good use you know, out of those get good use uh, so this thing looks just like a seal they're going to chuck it in the water uh, right in the great white I can't say great white today Jesus fuck <laughs> great white shark capital of the world and see if they can get some to jump through the air. Um, this is insane. When they show up, boys, did you see how many seals were hanging out on those rocks where they're going to go fishing? Me, it made it's me feel less party. bad. It made me feel less bad that the seal... It's like when you when later on in the episode we see a whole pack of sardines or like a school of sardines. And it's like, yeah, if one of those gets eaten, like there's so many of them. But when you see the seals get eaten by sharks for the most part, it's like one swimming in the sea and you're like, oh, that rare specimen getting chased. There's so many of them. They could they yeah. could they could afford to lose a few. That's fine. I think I think they're a nuisance when there's that many of them. I, I'm now I'm kind of on the sharks team. Well, it's, it's um, th this place like that Seal Island. I wanted to. It's like my dream to go see that in person. Remember when we were in South Africa? I was like begging the family, like you could take boats and go out there and watch this happen. Yeah. And um, I, ironically, now there's not really much great white activity there anymore because it's as fucked as up as it sounds. Orcas like killer whales. They, they've all like there's this like shift in consciousness right now where they um they got a they got a taste for uh shark livers great white livers and they figured out oh, how fuck. to flip great whites upside down give them tonic and mobility <laughs> and fucking tear their liver fucking out and they just Ooh. leave them they just eat their liver and leave them like that oh so they're they're, they're in certain big uh great white areas they're doing this and then now the great whites are so scared of orcas that they won't come back to those areas for like Five years and every year now they're trying to find where the fuck these great whites have been going because they find different areas like this. Why do you guys keep saying great whites? Stop Gr that. <laughs> we're, we're, we're talking about our friend Greg White. Don't you know him? 
<laughs> it's a great, like white, white, great white. You guys are both saying great white, and it's it's throwing me off. Um, I I I I'll say this, Jay. You mentioned to to intro this this sketch that it was nighttime uh, in the water. I think it was actually early early morning. That's what it was early and, morning. Yeah, because because they they stay out there all day all, all morning and then they they get to the afternoon. I'm gotcha. always fascinated by the stunts that start early in the morning because it always gives me the sense of like, yes, this is funny, but how hungover are they right now? Because I guarantee you they are. <laughs> and being I guarantee out, yeah. you. Like high waves. Yes, yes. I, so it's like you could tell they're they're a little bit sluggish. They like they they turn the camera on, they piece together one funny sentence, and then they go, <laughs> and then they always just, like, look away from the camera, like, let me not do anything for 20 minutes. <laughs> the guy that took them out is is literally, he's the guy that first, like, first documented that Air Jaws thing, Chris Follows. He's, like, in every single Shark Week. He's, like, the, the probably the biggest expert in Great Whites. And now he has these two fucking goofs with him. I, I, I just, he was probably thinking he was filming some super science show for, like, Shark Week or something, and then he has these two hungover fucks, like you're saying, Mike, you that have no idea what's yeah. going on. They're kind of talking yeah. shit, like, oh, my God, I guess the Great White isn't that deadly when it didn't fucking demolish the seal yeah. the first time around, and he was probably yeah. so fucking pissed. <laughs> You'll see. <laughs> I think about that all the time on this show, where, like, even even down to the narrator of, of Wild Boys, and uh, I always wonder how many of the people know what they're getting themselves into before it starts, because I bet you, for the most part, they just think it's a nature show, and then they're like, what the fuck is this? This is crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's a bit of a cocktail. And Mikey, I got to go back and say thank you for correcting me on the time of day. I see you've obviously been playing more Death Loop than I have because you're an expert <laughs> yeah. at predicting what gotta time look at of the day sun you and know what time it is. It's got to look at the sun, baby. Uh, these sharks, 12 feet long, 1,000 pounds per shark. That ain't no joke, people. Chris Fellows is here. He's our expert on the boat, by the way. I think he's just here to be Australian, I think. Some sort of yeah. Australian. South uh, African, actually. He's African. He, I couldn't African. tell the accent. It sounded kind of Australian, you know, mate. We I'm grew up sorry. with a lot of Australian uh, or South, South African people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But listen, the the seal that they throw in the water the first time, like we see the fins coming almost immediately, right when they do right that. Uh, the boats, uh, the boys on the boat go wild. I, I wrote that in my notes. I, that's that's fucking terrible. I probably shouldn't have recited that. The boys <laughs> on the boat go wild. Uh, but it is the, intimidating the, to can see. Can you let us sharks. know, though, what do the wheels on the bus do? Uh, go round and round. Okay. Okay, so the boys that, on the boat go wild. The wheels on the bus go round and round. Um, and the host of the podcast goes on and on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, that's always how it's been, and that's how it's going to be. You don't like it? <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. I got two words for <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Uh, round and But round. listen, uh, we get suddenly, like out of nowhere, a wild murder of Pacific sardines oh, appear. Yes. Uh, and it's just like, wow, these guys struck gold. Not only are they out Captain hunting Chris great whites, I fucking said it right that time, there you and go. the nice. dolphins come out in droves here to eat some goddamn fish, like it's an all-you-can-eat buffet. And it's just like, wow, what a day, you know, to see all that nature in one day. Uh, we get former WWE AEW pro wrestler Brian Danielson to come out to uh, Flight of the Valkyries <laughs> as the crowd chants yes hold on wrong podcast uh <laughs> but hey boys it's been a good time out out on the ocean i'm glad we got to see this and don't worry there's more sharks to come later but we're going to take a bit of a break for that and check out what's next we are greeted by singers on the pier in these green and white dress they're dancing in unison steve-o gets in and they start running a conga line hopping on one foot he just grabs ass and gets right in there i love it i love steve-o's dancing when he gets he does this like little tribal he has this little shimmy whenever he gets into these like cultural <laughs> dances where he's like trying to like make it seem like he's part of it and he's not and then he just figures yeah. a way to get into it i don't know it just always makes me laugh it's good totally. i do like that about wild boys i don't know that they always do it uh it with like a sensitive touch but it is i do like that eventually they are showing parts of the culture of the place that they're in you know it remains to be seen whether they do it in a in a positive or negative way but it's always cool to yeah. see that because you don't always get that like especially not on jackass yeah, no, Mike, you're totally right. It, it is cool to see it because that's kind of what you would want. It's like we talked about that's part jackass, part nature documentary, yes. part travel show. I like that that travel show element's there. Yeah. Um, you know, if you haven't been on Netflix before, that's a fucking thing. Travel shows everywhere. Uh, there's a reason they're popular. People like seeing other shit happen in other cultures, <laughs> and I hope that the rest of the show isn't just stunt after stunt like Jackass, but we do get that immersion. Um, and speaking of the road trip element, we're back on the road now to go visit a witch doctor. 
However, correction uh, there, Traditional Steve-o. healer there. Traditional <laughs> healer. Don't want to offend anybody, right? Especially those witch doctors. I mean, traditional healers. Yeah, because they're all over the uh, internet looking listen. for fucking comments. I thought they were just saying, the yeah, yeah. Drugs. They don't fucking know what the fuck we're talking about, witch doctor. Yeah, I it's so it. funny because the the internet is such a like niche. It's such a niche thing, or like yeah. like gives voice to all the niches that like there are. I guarantee you, traditional healers that are out there. Like, no, 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 you don't say that. Like, everyone is out there with their voice, being like, no, 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 that's not what we're called anymore. Even though, even though you you wouldn't expect them to have a voice on the well, internet. I'll tell you, if, you if one of those guys I'm supposed to go on some fucking ayahuasca trip and do some heavy fucking drugs in the woods with this fucking healers. And they're spending their time on fucking <laughs> yeah. Twitter. I do not want to yeah. fucking take drugs from them. I want one of those real OGs That's true. that doesn't have fucking shoes yeah. and's never fucking seen another white man in his life and's fucking out there in the middle of the bush, just fucking off living his life off plants and herbs. Doesn't doesn't know how to uh, even spell Twitter. Yeah. Uh, this guy, uh, I also speaking of not knowing how to spell Robert Shabala. I I, Shabala. I think I miss think I misspelled his name, but he seemed like a good guy. Like he seemed like. When when Pontius and Steve-O were kind of cracking jokes, he was kind of right there with them, like he was joking along with them. He understood that this wasn't just, and I'm sure he gets it all the time, he understood it wasn't just a study into his practices. They were they also kind of wanted to make jokes, and he's like, all right, let's fucking make jokes. Steve-O, you got a bad dick. And they're like, all right, well, <laughs> that's what we're going with now. Yeah. What is that when he says, "Some you know sometimes when you wake up, and he like clenches his fists, we get a close-up, and he says, what happens here? And then, of course... Like he says, you put clamps, but of course, Steve-O's just like, it's from jerking off too much. And Mikey, you're totally right. The conversation just immediately goes towards dicks and stays on dicks yep. the whole segment. Much um, like this podcast. It happens all the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I find it funny, though, because like this is very much, uh, it felt kind of like, speaking of Tom Green, like what Tom Green would do. You find a beat in the conversation and you just stick on that one thing and you would just, you'd be annoying about it. You just keep bringing yeah. that thing up and repeating it. They're just talking about dicks. Like anything the guy says, even if he's trying to be serious and give them solid information, they just bring it back to dicks. Uh, he, Steve-O wants him to predict the future of his wiener. Uh, he says, <laughs> good news though. It's Steve-O, you don't have a big problem. So uh, he's yeah. playing into it too, like you said, and I like that. Um, but by the time we're done, we find out that because Steve-O doesn't last very long in bed, we need some traditional this African Viagra. You Steve-O's put that stuff on the back of your hand like a spicy African Mexican Viagra. salsa and just shoot it down, down the hatch. Uh, everybody's doing it, man. This is like when you're 13 at a party and the bong goes around the circle. Come on, man. You're not a square, are you? You're going to do it too, right? Even the healer gets in on it and he starts having, oh God, oh Lord, an asthmatic attack. What is happening to this man? He, well, I think he snorted it and I'm surprised Steve-O Did didn't. I think, I think he did and that's why he was coughing so yeah. much and it surprised me that Steve-O didn't snort one of them. I thought he was going to for, for sure. sure. Uh, and then when he saw the healer do it, I bet you he was like, fuck, I should have, I should have done that. But when the healer snorts it and starts coughing, he sounds exactly like Steve-O. It, it, like he yeah. turned into him. At that point I was like, yo, this guy is a witch doctor. Like he can <laughs> channel the spirit of other people somehow. <laughs> like how did he know the guy he was sitting across would snort any powder you put on his hand? Yeah. Or even or a green, uh, uh goo wasabi. from Jackass doing the wasabi. That's exactly. Hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to ask you, Chris, did this give you flashback to the wasabi snooters? Were you getting a little queasy? <laughs> uh, wasabi snooters wasn't that bad for me. But, um, yeah, I, 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 that witch doctor, man, he just he had some w- weird vibe about him to me. Like, I would not want to take random concoctions that he made. Like, he seemed like he had one foot in the witch game and one foot out. Like, one foot in the real yeah. world, you know what I mean? <laughs> so I'm just like, yeah. I don't know about this fucking guy. He seemed a little shifty to me. Like, did you guys find him on Craigslist or some shit? Like, where did you figure <laughs> this guy out? I don't know. He bought. He just bought cocoa powder from Walmart, and that's what Steve That would have been all right. I had a feeling there's some weirder shit in there. But, I mean, the fact uh, that he committed to the game, too, that would have made me feel a lot better. Yeah. Speaking well, of committing boys, to the game, I was going to say there's, there's one game I wouldn't want to commit to, and that's football with hyenas. Hyena football. Oh god. oh god! Like the close up here, though, it starts off with a little nature interstitial, like a narrator, and uh, they're talking about the spotted hyena clitoris, which is like oh. a mock penis. Which I just love that they just had to, you know. Of course, we're going to show that, even though for the rest of the segment, it really has no bearing on it. It's just there because you know genitalia. It just. Why not? Uh, but yeah, it, just like you said, Mikey, throwing some tasty treats back and forth seems like a great idea because, you know, cats aren't known to pounce, so uh, no, I think never. this is okay. Yeah, it's it's amazing, too, because, uh, you know, I, I think so think much of this show... You know, hyenas are like dog family. They're not like lions. They're not big cats. Dude, dude, dude. 
Don't fucking Bill. mess with this nerd on fucking Wild Boys. I know facts. you're the Bill Nye, the <laughs> nature expert science guy over here, but come on. To, give me a know, break. I don't, I don't want the other, you know, the homies like me out there fact the first checking time. us. Yeah, yeah. You're, that's fair. That's and, fair. I, and I will fucking pounce on every opportunity, buddy. <laughs> okay, hey, there you go. <laughs> I, Chris, Chris and I actually, uh, you, you mentioned it, Chris mentioned it earlier a little bit, but we've actually been on an African safari before. And it was uh, uh, one thing that amazed me is how seriously they take everything, even though for the most part you're in a truck. Like a like a jeep, but it has no no uh, fucking doors or walls whatsoever. No no doors or anything. But the the people taking you on the tours are so serious about not fucking around because you know they're, these are wild animals. Yes, they're typically in a nature reserve of some sort, so it's not like it's not like the wild wild. But they still are liable to to fuck you up. And the hyenas specifically, they're like these guys are way more dangerous than people give them credit for. And the fact that that the wild boys were allowed to get out of their van and do this really surprised me. I think a lot of this show kind of couldn't happen nowadays. Uh, it, it just, it, it feels like no one would let them for insurance purposes or just the the park themselves say, no, you're not allowed to get out of the fucking car. It's, it's funny you say that about hyenas because when we were on the thing, the, they're the one animal I like lost fear of. Like, remember we were, like, yeah. we were underneath yeah. a tree and there was like a leopard kill and there was like, leopards in the tree eating it and like all these hyenas right on the ground and they were just like coming up to the truck and the guy sitting on the front of the truck like they were getting within inches of his feet and he's just booting them in the like kind of kicking it towards their face to get them to move away like yeah. he didn't yeah. seem scared at all so that's why like at first when i saw this stunt as a kid i was like hyenas lion king they're some mean motherfuckers they do have the strongest yeah, yeah. jaw pressure of any <laughs> mammal in the fucking world I wouldn't want to they mess with like them. They sound like Whoopi Goldberg. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> fuck. <laughs> they do, though. But, yeah, I just, What's up I, with that? I, I want to, like, I'll post a picture on our Instagram of, like, how close this guy got to our guide's foot because I have some great yeah. pictures. Maybe I'll post a few pictures of when Chris and Mikey, the Wild Brothers, were in the South Wild Africa. Wild Bros. We'll see how that fucking goes. We'll see. We'll see what's hey. up. But, yeah. Why the fuck was Whoopi Goldberg a mainstay in Hollywood Squares? Back in the why, why That's a good she question. She was on like every episode of that show, and not yeah, as many, I, not as many, not as many episodes as uh, Bruce Valanche, but you know, she was she was on quite a few. <laughs> are, are her the and Tracy center, Chapman the, the same person, person, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so, uh, because I know one of them hosts The View and one of them doesn't. <laughs> I wonder if they could have just replaced her with a hyena for an episode, if anyone would have noticed. <laughs> would, would we have noticed? <laughs> um, this, hey. this, you know, one thing I didn't, I didn't love about about this uh, this stunt was like I get why they were so scared. They were kind of like in and out, in and out, in and out. But I and and I don't blame them for that. But it did give this stunt just this weird stop start feeling to it that it never flowed. It was just kind of like, oh, this is good. Okay, they're back in the truck. Okay, that was kind of good. Oh, this is good. Okay, they're back in the truck. So I didn't really enjoy watching it that much. I would have rather just like, and this is kind of one of the problems with with Wild Boys sometimes is sometimes I just want to look at how cool an animal is because hyenas are fucking wicked. I love mm. them. Uh, and and instead I was looking at Pontius and Steve O run into a van a bunch of times. Hey, you know what, though? Don't worry, Mikey. You're about to get a real close-up of one of the wildest beasts known to oh. man. This is the Black Mamba. Oh, hey, is that Jeff Tremaine sleeping in the in the van? Mm. He is. Looks like mm. they're on their way somewhere, and <laughs> old Jeff had to get some shut-eye. Uh, <laughs> this is fucking <laughs> stupid. It's like, a, it's like a sock puppet. Uh, they give it a subtitle, like they give it a little, you know, uh, caption that says Black Mamba, uh -huh. and Steve-O just wakes up Jeff and goes... Black Mamba <laughs> slaps and him in the face. That's it. That's but Jeff's Jeff's reaction was amazing. Uh, he he looked so confused, and then like he understood, but then he was like he yeah. still didn't get it. Like I like as though I don't know if it's that he didn't understand the joke or still didn't understand what was happening to him. He just looked so confused. But I'm a little confused, Jay, because you mentioned that yes, it had this had the subtitle Black Mamba, but you said that Stevo, and then you said something about a sock puppet. This. I all I remember is there was a giant, there was a snake, a, a dangerous black mamba in the van, mm -hmm. and that woke up Jeff Tremaine. Is that not what you saw? That's what I yeah, saw. it's kind of. Uh, I might have had that wrong. You know, I think yeah. I didn't. I wasn't looking close enough. It's quite possible that you know, on full moons, Steve O's right arm transforms into a, a black mamba. I would imagine, and I know yeah, black mambas I, like this is this is. And Chris, you you <laughs> as as, as the nature boy of this podcast, uh, you you Chris, I know you have. Um, uh, uh, yeah. black mambas have googly eyes. That's that's a yeah, fact. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And Chris, I think the wrestler thing of his mankind was no, it? no, no. He had Socko. There was another guy that had this like snake puppet thing, and he's like, his finishing move was like a snake, like, 
And oh, uh, Santino, <laughs> Santino Morella. Yeah, it's, dude, there's this one skit on the, <laughs> that's always on the internet. You'll see it if you have meme pages every once in a while where it's like, you're, t- you're trying to tell me wrestling isn't real, and he has a snake puppet out, and then someone starts <laughs> snake charming it, and the other guy starts snake charming it, and then it starts attacking himself. <laughs> it's just like one of the greatest fucking most ridiculous wrestling skits I've ever seen. And yet, don't break K. Hey, don't break K. Yeah, exactly. No. And you know what? Speaking of the Black Mamba again, sock puppet or not, it's still it's one way to wake up, but it ain't no powdered asshole. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. That's true. Jackass number two, part four. If there, if there were, uh, if there were a uh, a real black mob on the van, though, I would uh, uh, shit my pants or or do do my pants. I don't know about that. Would you, could, would you do 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 in your pants? pants? Oh, I could do 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 do. I could do 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 do. You could, you could could do do do. Uh, we're just stopping on the road. You know, you ever been on a long road trip and you're like, hey, pull over at that uh, gas station. Let's go get some Gatorades. Uh, they need a snack. They're fucking hungry. Good yeah. thing they found uh, some kudu doo doo. What is a kudu, uh, Mike? You want to explain what a kudu is to the it's, audience? It's it's kind of like oh, a gazelle. Kudu. It's it, you know there there are animals in uh, in in the the uh, in this uh, when when you go on like a safari or or in the 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 uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Just the wild in the wild in Africa the uh, where where savanna. Yeah, there you go. One one of those things. And they basically serve as what what our guide said, the McDonald's of the Savannah, where they're basically there to get eaten, and that's a kudu. Well, specifically they get eaten by everything. Apollos, whose butt actually has an M on it. <clears throat> yes, yes, <laughs> uh, uh, and that's why they, they the M for McDonald's, like the golden arches for other uh, for other uh, predators. Uh, but yeah. the kudu just goes around shitting little hard black pellets that apparently uh, uh, people running tours think is, is a great idea to play a game. They have a name for this game and in their, in their native tongue, I can't remember what it was, but it was black turd spitting is what it translated to where they yeah. would put the kudu doo doo in their mouth and see who could spit it far. I love how this answered the, one of the, like my lifelong questions of how much do could a kudu do if a kudu could do do. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you, you were you were sitting on that one for a little bit. I just thought of I it right now. It. Shit, you not. I honestly, the, I, all I was thinking when when I saw them put this in their mouth is like I would need to wash that taste out of my mouth with a nice cold mountain kudu doo doo doo. Oh my god! I thought you were gonna say I need to wash it first, like it's a grape or something. Like no, that would oh, make no, it. No. Just yeah, give it a yeah. quick wash, no, quick rinse no. under the tap. You know, but Dude. this this Lee Gutteridge guy, I feel like he's been doing this for a while. Yeah, I, and he seems proud of it too. So I guess if hey, if you're gonna be proud of something, I mean, at least he commits. You know, yeah, he's putting shit in his mouth, but he's proud of it. So you got to give him that. Yeah, and he's uh, good at it too. They put it in there. He, he gives you directions, too. So if you want to try this at home, you put it in your mouth, swirl it around to get the flavor, and then you're going to see who can spit the furthest. When Steve-O has his turn, he says he's going full auto. None of this three-round burst <laughs> bullshit. Great. Yeah, and he just kind of steps up to the camera and gives us a nice spit. Everybody starts laughing. But I think what the, the, the real highlight here, what we all came to see, is Pontius shooting one up into the air into Steve-O's mouth, followed by Steve-O puking all over the place. Poetry and motion. Do you, th- you think the ranger, do you think the ranger, the ranger uh, when he gets home from work every once in a while, his like, wife's like, you bumped into some some uh, tourists again in the bush, didn't you? <laughs> Does his breath just taste like doo 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 I There's something about when, when Pontius goes to spit and this was Jeff Tremaine's idea. You can hear him behind the camera. He's like, spit it into Sivo's mouth. Like, Jeff Tremaine is getting really good at having fucked up ideas on the spot. But it's amazing that it works so perfectly the first time. And then Steve-O immediately gags. And then and then the two guides are just laughing. Like, this was this one was very, very funny. Uh, and it always gets me thinking, like, would Steve-O be Steve-O if he didn't have that gag reflex that he has? Because he it's it's automatic for that guy. And, and I think it adds so much to so many of the stunts that he just vomits, uh, you know, immediately yep he's he's vomit on cue I, I never get tired of seeing it as soon as you hear that the that classic that iconic sound of you just know yeah, it's coming yeah it's it's great uh <laughs> but boys put this put some of those kudu doo doos in your pocket and get back in the van we got to get back to the ocean stat and hey don't you be sneaking those on the ride home you're gonna have your dinner first you don't eat. You don't fill up on kudu doo doos before your mom made you a nice lasagna. You know what I'm saying? You save they those. They did for look kind of tasty. Like, they, like honestly, yeah, they looked pretty good. <laughs> but yeah, kind of look like those chocolate covered raisins or yeah, 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 like yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. One day, boys, we'll go on a safari. We'll one, one day. Up. 
but we're back out to sea. We gotta get out there because we've got to go and examine the main food source of these great white sharks. Let's go swimming with the seals this time. Let's actually get in there and, and join the phenomenon. This is the world's dumbest place to swim. <laughs> they swim for a bit to no great effect. And then literally minutes later, after they crawl out of the ocean, it's a massacre at both sides. I'm talking, the shark finds a seal, he's fucking him up. Body slam, suplexes, cross bodies, clotheslines, hurricanas, people's elbows, you name it. It's a mess in there. The good thing they got out of the water when they did. Yeah, yeah. This one just felt insane to me. I don't think there was much more they could have shown because nothing really happened. But just being in there, you you literally couldn't pay me enough money. I wouldn't do it for a million dollars. If if I'm ever swimming in the ocean and I fucking see one seal, stab yeah, I'm out of there. Out. You don't swim where prey fucking swims. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just don't do it. No, but you know what you do do? <laughs> Run naked with Coody? the ostriches. That's what you do. I love. Yeah, this, this is a, this happens in pretty much every single episode where they find a herd of some animal and they have that same fucking thongs on and they just run like that. And the wide stance of Pontius every time just fucking kills me. He's like <laughs> that, like caveman, jungle man, whatever you want to call it. Like I don't know. This is just a fun. It's like a fun little interstitial that just can't never gets boring to me. Yeah, I, uh, I I love that. It was great. Uh, not a ton to say about it apart from uh, do it every episode because I will laugh every time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so how about a name drop, guys? I feel like, yeah, you knew there was going to be some sort of crossover at some point mm -hmm. between w their roots in this, but it didn't take long. Yes, let's go find the mythic jackass penguin. And believe it or not, as they say in unison, it's really called a jackass penguin. Yeah, uh, they're yeah they they're dressed up in tuxes and flippers, and they're just gonna go chase them around for a bit. Uh, Steve O says they walk like Wee Man. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't thought, know how I, thought I should feel they, about that. I, that I thought part. he said they walk like me now. I didn't hear Wee Man, but that's that's, that's so funny. I just the, the whole idea of them being dressed in tuxedos to go see penguins is like my childhood dream. <laughs> uh, and these penguins, like there was one shot of them viciously pecking each other's face, like. There's got to be a better way to fight than going, like, pecking each other's face. If that's playing, then I never want to be a penguin, and they're pretty hardcore. Uh, maybe they were just uh, 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 influenced by jackass stars being on premise with them. But did you see that when they just started violently pecking each other's face as though it was no yeah. big deal? It was weird. It scared me. <laughs> I could tell. He yeah. very nervous. He's like, <laughs> <"Halt."> <laughs> 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 All I can say though is I'm glad there wasn't some I'm glad there wasn't some strange translation issue and they showed up all decked out in tuxes and flippers only to find that they were really tracking the jackass pangolin and not the jackass penguin because that would just be What's a pangolin? You don't, don't know what a pangolin, pangolin is? is? No. Oh, man. Cause the coronavirus, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Is it? They found out. Did you ever see that South Park episode? No. Oh my God! You got to fuck the penguin. Oh no! No, I didn't uh, see it. Oh my God! R R Randy Marsh is just fucking. You know, he goes off. <laughs> it's, he, it's he, good. he started coronavirus by fucking a penguin or uh, fucking a bat as well. Okay, it happens. It happens. Yeah. So where are we now, boys? Well, Steve O's going to oh, tell us that we're in Hansba. Hansba. South got Africa. A lot of good footage of great this is it. This is we're now wrapping we it up. We're getting to the end. Sharks. One more big we'll segment end, with great white sharks. Andre That's what we're Hart. fucking here for this episode, guy. right? And when you're going to go into the water with great whites, you need Andre Hansman. And uh, as Steve O says, if you don't want to die, you need Andre. To which Andre <laughs> replies, "Actually, a lot of people have, have died around these things." Yeah, yeah. Well, at least yeah. you're confident enough to put it on camera. <laughs> <laughs> that so, that was weird because it's it's almost like Steve-O was given bad information where he's just like, the first guy to ever dive with, with great white sharks without a cage. And he's like, no, a lot of people a lot of people have done that already. That's not me. And Steve-O's like, well, fucking get put on camera. So whatever. And he just like moves on. Like, <laughs> I don't know. Someone told me this. I don't give a fuck about who you are. Well, so would you guys have thought that you could listen to the birds to find when the sharks were approaching, because apparently that's a thing. You just listen for the wacha, and then the, the, then you'll see some sharks. That's all you got to do. It was, that, that was badass. Like, imagine imagine being on a boat and someone's like, I can hear that there's a shark nearby. I'd be like, yo, you are the coolest fucking dude since Manny. Well, there are weird things like that with, like, in the ocean. Remember when we were deep sea fishing and, like, we're in the middle of fucking nowhere. Like, you can't see any land, and there's one floating two-by-four just in the middle of the ocean. 
And the guy's like, the captain's like, we got to fish right here. And there's like a massive school of mahi-mahi underneath there. We caught like fucking 30 or 28 mahi-mahi. It's just like, there's little signs you can see if there's a bird in the middle of nowhere, things like that. It's pretty, pretty interesting. Yeah. It'd be like John Voight's character in Anaconda. He fucking knew every little fucking sign of the jungle. It's like, it's a little too quiet right now. The anaconda's around. He's, uh, and he also knows all about the insides of an anaconda too man that we we should almost do that movie on this after one of the ones <laughs> <Jesus> Christ. <laughs> anaconda special snake week yeah, yeah coming soon i don't know if i can handle it yeah <laughs> underwater vision shows us some sharks and they're zoning in on the bait now jorge the seal makes his second really? appearance gets back in the water i think this must be jorge like, too this must be jorge too pontius is one because jorge True, yeah. one got got uh got annihilated ripped to shreds yes he did indeed his butt and, got uh, off, actually. I can't yeah. imagine the, the life of those things yeah, are very long when you're up against one of these bad boys. Uh, it doesn't take long for the shark to emerge. We do get some close-up footage of the shark, but it's not long till everybody panics. You see, we've got ma- a man in the water. His name's Mark. They're, they're screaming and yelling, get Mark out of the water. Yes. Get Mark out of the water. Now. Now. Put that get cookie to the down. water. Get out of the water. I don't know why I heard it that way, but that's how my brain translated translated it. Arnold was on the it's boat. It's more fun that way, here. I'll tell you that much. Yeah. You know when when the guy who's like supposed to be the all knowing like like you know he's he's there he's the guide he's he's done this before when he starts to sound panicky that's scary even if you're in a cage he's just like yo the guy in the cage could die like he's get him the fuck out of there. Uh, but kudos to the camera crew in this kudos. one because they're yeah kudos kudos to the crews um because if i were in the water i would do do myself and uh they're in there like getting shots of the boat in in like and not getting the credit that that steve-o and and pontius are getting for for doing basically the same thing and and i that's the case in a lot of nature documentaries i find yeah yeah when you're front and center like that i can't imagine the feeling you know the adrenaline that's 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 nuts and i just fucking realized his name's mark god damn it i could have made a tommy wiseau joke oh hi mark, mark. <laughs> hi, hi mark Get him out of the water. No. <laughs> I can't I do better than that. Oh, man, the room. You, you, you don't got to see it, but you got to see it. You got to um, see it. The, the, the whole idea of this one, though, is that uh, Pontius and Steve-O are going to jump into the water when a shark is nearby. You know, no right. more of this going out there and waiting for one to come. They're going to wait for a shark to come to them and then jump in the water right, right by it. Uh, but when they do jump in the water, Steve-O basically jumps from the boat into the boat like he jumps so like so close to the boat and is basically in the cage before he hits the water and the way that they pile into the cage as soon as as soon as their their pinky toe touches the ocean it just like a can of sardines like they're just packed tight in there yeah i love the guys making jokes about it too elaborate please yeah (laughs) mark like what when they get in and he's and he's making jokes about uh but this was this time when he said when he's like, oh, the the the. Sh- no, he says he says it was a, a female shark and he, and she yeah. saw your your wieners uh, and, yeah. and and went away. Yeah. away. Yeah, yeah, that's okay, what I was trying yeah, to yeah. say. But I, I my my uh, screen locked closed, so I couldn't think I couldn't see the exact quote. That oh, I, over it <laughs> yeah, I was, so like, I was, I was like, like trying to panic there. You guys called me out. I'm really <laughs> kind of hoping somebody else wrote that down well, too. Like, you can't you can't <laughs> just be on a podcast. Like, what'd you think of that uh, sketch? I liked when he told the joke. Well, I, I, it literally <laughs> locked right as I said that, and I was like st- trying to scroll to it. I'm like, oh my god, this is a panicking moment. And I hope funny. you guys were kind of carrying me through. But no, we that, wanted to call you out. Yeah. Uh, we wanted to yeah, leave thanks. you in the the cage of your own making, Here, uh, packed uh, in well, there with all of your own ideas. Let's give Chris felt some very some... lost. I felt like I was on a cage in the middle of the ocean, away from the boat. There, very, very traumatizing. <laughs> Out at sea, just floating. Let's let's give Chris some uh, redemption here, since you're the science animal expert. Uh, they do talk briefly about the teeth of a shark. Did you catch what he said about the top and bottom teeth and how those work together? Did you yeah, it's They're terrifying. Actually... Yeah, the so, serrated edges. Yeah. And he said specifically, too, like they're, the bottom they're teeth. Meant the bottom teeth the yeah. They're meant to saw. They're meant to saw because the bottom teeth, he says, they're like, think of it like a fork, right? So you, you stab in there and you got a good hold on your food. And the top teeth are like steak knives. You grind back and forth, cut it up. Oh, dude, that's... That's that's just yeah. fucking that's a that killing grating machine. kind of yeah yeah it's spooky and I love because when he when uh, when he describes the way that their teeth work Steve O looks at him and is like oh man when I saw the great white shark doing all the hurricaneramas and people's elbows and and uh, and Boston crabs on that seal <laughs> I thought maybe I don't want <laughs> yeah, crabs, crabs. In the legs. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe I don't want to go swimming with a shark but now I'm super confident about it thanks man 
How the fuck do you Boston crab a seal? I want to see that. That's fucking, that's a visual. <laughs> actually, Holy he's grabbed shit. by the two tail pieces. Actually, yeah, seems pretty, it like, can, it can do work. pretty efficient. You get a good grip in there. You can't do a sharpshooter, though, or a figure four leg lock. Unfortunately. Um, no. <laughs> Unless you literally, like, put your foot right through their flesh. Oof, yeah, that, well, let's not. Well, then, technically, Chris, if that's <laughs> the stipulation, not. you could figure four leg lock anything you want, including yeah. non-legs. Fucking Ric Flair could do whatever he wants. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> yeah, apparently he believes so when he's on yeah. a, an airplane and, and has enough to drink. <laughs> <laughs> well, boys. They ain't all... nothing wrong with the fucking flight from hell. <laughs> <laughs> Shark parties aside, I don't know. I think I'm with I think I'm with Pontius on this one, and I I can't decide either. Maybe you guys can, but I don't know what I like the least about this. The cold, the sharks, or the male nudity. Well said, Pontius. <laughs> <laughs> That's a total Pontius line right there, if I ever heard one. Yep. And we come up to the end of the episode here. It blew right by, but uh, wow, we got the boys riding a donkey here, and I got to let Chris have the line. They've got, let me just put it into a picture in the mind first. It's the boys on a donkey and a monkey riding the boys. <laughs> and what do they say to the camera, Chris? Um, You got to do this one there for me. I know it's the, it's the thing that no animals were hurt in the filming of this television episode. Yep, they do say that, but then... I, I, Come on, Chris. It's I, your my phone's line, died, buddy. so I have no idea. I'm trying to... Oh, no go. one's... No, no one's bothered <laughs> the wild boys. There you go, Chris. Come yeah. on. There you go. There you go. I was going off Save your memory the there. last minute. Oh, my God. You guys gave me... You guys literally gave me the wide open jump shot, and I fucking bricked it. Bricked it for the championship. Yep. It's all right. God damn it. <laughs> It's all right. It's only episode one. You know, we've got no many, many more to come. Boys. How did I fucking drop the ball there? That's my favorite thing to say. I've been saying it for fucking seasons. It doesn't <laughs> yeah, even matter. it you. once yeah. an episode. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's that. Well, that's it, boys. We made it. The credits roll. And wow, I you got to love those uh, those year 2000s graphics of the, <laughs> we didn't mention it, but the Wilds Boys logo is just kind of like a, it's, it feels like it came straight from the 80s. Yes. You know, it's like a, it's like that grid pattern that you'd see on like, you know, nightly news. You know, you know they what I'm talking They borrowed this about. pattern from Tron. From like Tron. back when Tron was very technologically advanced. They're like, yo, is that asset public domain now? Let's just use that. Yeah, we're going to be seeing a lot more of that globe from here on out because we are happy to announce that this was not just a one-off. We will be doing the entire first season of Wild Boys and we'll go from there. No promises yet, all right? Hey, hey cool it a little bit. We're, we, we like Wild Boys, but... We want to warm up to it first, and I don't know what we're gonna do next week, guys. I'm feeling like, uh, bam! I just, I just need to think about it. I, I, we're just about done with this one, but there's got to be something. Oh, wow. that'll, oh. that'll just, you know, let us live. Viva la bam! Yeah, that that sounds about right. You want? You guys want to do Viva la bam? Yeah, do a I little back and forth action. Fuck as it. long as. As long as my uh, my Toss my next salad. door neighbors don't uh, don't uh, report me for abusing someone after just yelling "Viva la Bam" as loud as I could, these walls are thin. And trying to uh, start the revolution. Start trying to start the revolution. <laughs> so your walls are so thin. So, your neighbors are here. You jerk off. <laughs> <laughs> like fuck, Mikey's jerking off again. Because guy ever gets really late says. for himself. I can hear his heavy breathing. <laughs> yeah, that's what Mikey says when he comes every time. So they're Viva used la to hearing that. Viva yeah. la yeah. Bam. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right well we had a question of the week uh compilation throughout the four parts of jackass number two uh but due to just the way we recorded this we're a little bit ahead of schedule so we're actually going to wait till the next episode to do question of the week so yes. i think what we just forego this week because we've got a pile of them coming let's and... let ourselves catch up and then we'll read all the answers and then we'll start again with questions in the next episode 100%. So if you haven't answered yet and you want to get in while the getting's still good, be sure to check us out at Pod on Instagram and Twitter, and uh, you can answer one of the various questions there. Um, if you're wondering what those questions are, uh, Mikey, do you have them handy or should we just... Yeah, no, I do. Uh, we do we okay, had cool. uh, several questions. Uh, the first one was, you're about to get a brand on your ass, a la Bam Margera. Uh, what would you have that brand be? The second one is, uh, you and your friends are playing dodgeball in the dark. What are you going to use instead of a dodgeball? The third one is, you got to take a shot of horse jizz. This is my favorite one. Uh, what are you? What one ingredient will you mix with the horse jizz to make it go down a little bit easier? Uh, you can say more horse jizz if, if, if that's you. I don't want to yuck on your yum. <laughs> Uh, and then the fourth question is, uh, you have to choose two cast members to do uh, an all-time epic stunt for Jackass. Keep the balance in mind, which two two Jackass members are you using? There you have it. 
And that's another episode of The Jackass. Thank you for joining us on into this new foray, into new territory. I can't wait to see what comes next. And don't worry, we'll have more Jackass-specific stuff coming down the pipe, too. We haven't forgotten. We just want to, you know, take a bit of a detour. So thanks for yeah. coming along with us. And until next week with Viva La Bam, Season 1, Episode 1. Bye. I'm Jason Wellwood. Bye. I'm Chris Aaronworth. Bye. I'm Mikey Aaronworth. And this has been Jackass. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Furnished by Sad Styles Productions. Get into it! This was a Press X for Sound audio production.